It's Sunday, January the 13th. I'm Chuck Stokes, and this is Spotlight on the News. Inside the Michigan presidential primary, joining me now is Saul Anousis. He is chairman of the Michigan Republican Party. Saul, welcome back to Spotlight. It's always Great. a pleasure seeing you. Great to be with you. Thank You've you. You've been a busy, busy soul. Uh, is it safe to say that you got exactly what you wanted, a red-hot race for president on the GOP side here in Michigan? Uh, absolutely and more. I mean, I think this ended up being uh, as best as we could have expected and even better. Uh, it is a wide open race on the Republican side. All the candidates are coming into Michigan. Uh, uh, we had a start right after the primary out of New Hampshire where both Governor Romney and Senator McCain were here immediately. Uh, we have uh, uh, Governor Huckabee and Congressman Hunter. You got them everywhere. Coming. Everybody. They're coming in and, and crisscrossing Michigan. A lot of the national journalists as well as posters are saying Michigan could very well make or break someone on the Republican side because everybody is in the race here. Do you agree or disagree with that? Uh, it could. It could really put someone f uh, forward. I mean, look, you had, uh, you know, Governor Huckabee won in Iowa. Then Governor McCain or Governor uh, Romney won in in Wyoming, and then John McCain pulled out the victory in New Hampshire. So you basically have everybody coming into Michigan with no clear winner, and everybody moving forward into Super Tuesday. I think the key is after New Hampshire, what's happened is that we're really now in a situation where the campaign is wide open, and it's going to be Super Tuesday that really defines who's the leading candidate coming out of the Republican side. Doesn't former Massachusetts Governor Romney have to win here in Michigan? This is his home state, and he is invested millions of dollars in advertising. Yeah, I'm not sure he has to win, but he has to do extremely well. I mean, he's got to be in the top two, and he's got to be close. I mean, it's it's the winning part of so it. So he Remember, can do a close second, and you still think he yeah, can survive? Yeah, any of them can, because this is a marathon. You know, you're adding delegates. So, uh, you know, from a delegate count, as an example, today, Romney's winning. But that's so early that it's really not relevant. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to be a, a marathon. It's a game of, of addition. And so every state matters, every congressional district matters, every delegate matters. And I think until we get to Super Tuesday, where 22 states are holding their primary, which is only a couple weeks away, that's when we'll basically find out who the front runner on the Republican side is. Uh, you and Mark Brewer on the Democratic side got together, said, what the heck, we're going to put Michigan first. We're going to break the rules right. and uh, suffer the consequences. Will your delegates be seated because right now national party is saying we aren't going to recognize your delegates right well the democrats lose all of them we lose half of ours but in the end i think both of us feel that we will be seated uh, how, all, how confident are you i'm very confident i mean look all the presidential camp campaigns have said they want to seat us uh, traditionally what has happened is the party nominee tries to unite the party and bring everyone together and so they do seat you and they bring everybody in and michigan will be a key state uh, the other aspect clearly is the fact that you know going into the primaries everybody wanted us to be early we are a kind of a bellwether state it's the home of the reagan democrats uh, there's a lot of independence here so i feel pretty good that one way or the other our delegates and our people will participate technically you can't count those delegates until they're recognized that's at the convention. so when they start talking about totals uh, as they're going from state we'll be to half state off. michigan won't be in there yeah well we'll be half down on, on the Republican side. Democrats will have zero on their side. All right, there's talk that uh, Mayor Bloomberg in New York may jump into this race as an independent. What would that do to, uh, to the dynamics on the Republican side? You know, hard to say. I mean, the reality is that I think uh, Mayor Bloomberg is kind of trying to fill the gap in the middle, uh, arguing that the Republicans may be too conservative, the Democrats too liberal. The question is whether or not that really plays out. I think if you take a look at the Republican candidates in particular, you've got some pretty mainstream conservative Republicans. I mean, it's not like we've got wingers running where people would be, you know, looking at it and being afraid of it. So I, I think I think Mayor Bloomberg's window is fairly small, and I think the, the gap he's trying to fill is fairly small. So, you know, unless he thinks he can do it on his own, um, which I understand he's actually been polling last week uh, and looking around the country whether he could win or not, I, I think it's, it's, it's fairly unlikely. All right. Um, there's a lot of talk about crossing over, whether it be Republicans crossing over to Democrats or vice versa, because they can technically right. do it into this primary. A lot of people are upset if they were Barack Obama supporters that they cannot vote for that person. How concerned are you, how worried are you that this crossing over could screw up everything? 
Not very. I mean, look, the Obama people and the Edwards people are encouraging their people to vote uncommitted. Uh, from their perspective, nothing could be better than to have uncommitted beat Senator Clinton. I mean, that would be an embarrassment, obviously, in Michigan for Clinton and a way to stop their kind of the anti-Hillary movement that wants to get Obama or uh, Edwards in the process. So I think there is, and then obviously the Clinton people are working very hard to make sure that Senator Clinton has a big victory here in Michigan. So on the Democrat side, you do have a race going on, and it's a very direct one. And theoretically, two out of every three voters have been voting against Senator Clinton, so it's not unheard of that this could be a tough race for her. But either way, you don't see it happening in such large numbers that no. it can make a real not difference. Not like in the past, because in the past, we used to hold our primaries in separate dates. The Republicans had one date, Democrats another. Today, we're voting together. They're going to have to go in, the voters are going to go in and pick a Republican or Democrat ballot. Most people will vote in the party they feel most comfortable with. All right, when all is said and done, who do you think is going to walk out of Michigan here uh, leading the pack? Well, I'm not a betting man. I'd hate to be betting on this one. I think this is uh, very close. If you take a look at the polls historically, Romney and Giuliani were leading in Michigan. Uh, Huckabee and McC McCain were in, in the distant third and fourth. The latest poll actually had Huckabee leading, uh, but they're basically within statistical margin of error. So you got Huckabee, McCain, and Romney neck and neck in Michigan, uh, and Giuliani still kind of a distant fourth now. He's kind of flipped the other way around. So I think it's a wide open ball game in Michigan. It'll be a question of who turns out, which campaign does a better job getting their message out, and also getting their voters to the polls. Quick final question Is there a Democrat that you would? most like to go up against in November? Uh, I am very confident and feel very good, whether it's going to be Senator Clinton, Barack Obama, or John Edwards, that we've got great issues, great contrasts, and the Republicans will be able to run very well against them. So I think we're going to do very well in Michigan. I look forward to the fall. Sal Nusis, thanks for coming in, and good luck on election night.